team there. We're planning just a little more worship yet, even as we go on through uh, this morning. And uh, this, this is a special, special morning. We would like to just reflect on the goodness of God. You know, there's a verse in Matthew 6, 33, and I think some of you know it, maybe all of you. Oh, yes, the children are excused for children's church. Children are excused. The Lord bless you. There's a verse in Matthew 6, 33. It says, Seek ye first, what? The kingdom. the kingdom. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then what? All these things shall be added unto you. All these things shall be added. Now I want us to talk about what are all the things that get added. Let's think on that verse a little bit, because that's where we're going to be at, is Matthew 6, just a little bit at the close. I'm going to share a little bit uh, this morning. Here it was uh, earlier this week as we were sharing and praying about Sunday. I think Maynard shared, he said, man, it seems like we ought to have a praise Sunday for what all God's doing. And so that's kind of what this is, is a reflection of what happens as we seek his kingdom, his righteousness, then what things are added and so you're going to have an opportunity to share in this message. And the worship team will, may come back out as well. We wish you all a blessed Father's Day, you as fathers. But uh, today's message is one of praise. You know, I love the songs that, that uh, they were sharing. You know, when we seek first the kingdom of God, He is Jireh. When we sang about Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, but it says, Jireh, you are enough. What does the word Jireh mean in the Hebrew? Does somebody know just offhand? We always say it means provider, but it's actually even broader than that. It's, it's the God who sees after or sees to it. When, when that word was introduced as Jehovah Jireh was, remember when Abraham was going up the mountain with Isaac his son. And I don't believe his Isaac was just a little boy. I, I believe he was 33 because it was Mount Moriah. It was a, pattern, a picture of Jesus. I believe he was in his 30s. I think he was the same age as Jesus. But anyway, regardless of the age, there's some reason I can say scripturally why that I think that's true. But say he was whatever age. Isaac asked his father. He says, Dad, he said, here, listen, we got the, the fire. You have the coals and the wood. But he said, where's the lamb? Where's the sacrifice? And then jo Abraham says, God, God will provide the lamb. And so he called that place the mountain of the Lord's provision. But it was just, he, he, he introduced Jehovah Jireh which means the Father God who sees to it. He will see to it. He will see after. Everything's going to be taken care of. He'll see to it. I got it. Father God had it, and it was provided. Jehovah Jireh. But that's this last season in our church family, and I, I just want to say I'm blessed to be part of, of this family. I know there's some gone again today, but um, I'm thankful for you. You guys have made just a beautiful witness for the Lord. And, and I would like you to think about in what ways has the Lord seen to it in these last week and a half, two weeks. You as a church family have, have done well in three funerals in these last just 10, 12 days. And then a weekend of of a, a community event that was huge out here with the tent. And as people are still reflecting on what God did that weekend because of Jehovah Jireh, the God who's seen to it. There was so many seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then God said, all these things will be added. You know, we're, we don't have to fear. We're a child of God. Boy, there were so many powerful songs. I just blessed the worship team. That was so beautiful. 
He's a, a good, good father. I love it how he whispers to us in the dead of night. Okay, I'm going to, uh, if you have the PowerPoint up there, it says look at the, look at the birds. How, how come the birds are off of there? <laughs> oh, there they are. <laughs> okay, <laughs> look at the birds. Um, yeah, Matthew 6. <clears throat> It has so much to do with kingdom living. And I'm going to just have a short message, and the rest of this message is going to be yours as you reflect here. Remember what Jesus did, it says in Matthew 4, how he began at that time. He says, now, listen, repent. This is the time. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And, and we're living that. So, okay, now we're in the kingdom of heaven. We talked about what does this kingdom look like. I think if you could have looked at your lives in this last days, that was kingdom living. There was a lot of kingdom living happening. It was beautiful. Because see, suddenly we had to, some of us had to, well maybe all of us had, had to evaluate where our treasure is. Some of you took on the work and, and maybe numerous days. Uh, others gave so much time and, and energy into things of God. Then Jesus said, and after all that setting, he said, now look at the birds. <laughs> they don't sow or reap, gather in the barns, yet your father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And God sees every one of us. I love that song about the good father, how he whispers in the middle of the night into our hearts. Wow. I, I just am blessed by by what God is doing and what he's done in our lives and what he has a plan to do in the days ahead. Because we are living this time, it's the kingdom. Appreciate what Lyle shared about camp and it's another amazing effort that's gonna go into a, a beautiful local ministry that changes the lives of young people 12 to 15. You know, what does that mean to, to trust the Lord, to look at the birds and, and recognize God sees them? I can never read this passage. It's recorded in different portions. Luke talks about it. I, I think maybe even Mark will reflect a little bit on the birds and how God sees the birds. And I, I never see that passage without thinking of, I don't know, I think it must have been 13, 14 years ago now, but John... Pastor John Yoder and I were, were on our way to Hicksville, Ohio, and it was a slushy morning. It was some, some minister's meetings, and there was slush on the road, and as we were getting, and we were on the main road, but as we were getting there, there was just these tracks that we were running down. It was on the main road, but you could see where it was fairly clear, but then in the middle, there was this hump of, of slush, and then in the center of the road, there was a, a, a a, a row of slush, just where your tires were, was fairly free. And we were driving along, and all of a sudden, we see this sparrow up ahead. And I don't know what he was doing, but he had been in the middle. He landed, maybe he seen something there. And then just before we got there, he jumped off of this little pile of slush in the middle, and right in this open pathway, where I'm coming with my vehicle. And he just jumped right in front, I mean, there was really no time, and I, you don't want to lose your control over a sparrow necessarily anyway, but I just remember feeling the little, just with the tires as I ran over him. Just a sparrow just made a little bump on the tires as he was just made part of the pavement. And it, you know what, I, I, what my heart went to? Immediately I thought, it was just like, Father God said, I seen that. I seen the sparrow. It wasn't in a condemning way. It was just letting me know he sees the sparrow. And how much more he cares about the details of our hearts and our lives. We can lay every burden down. And I don't know, there was, there was a lot of opportunity for, for people to stress out or to just be overwhelmed when you have six, seven hundred people, I don't know how many different ones they fed in the, the meals, ended up being more meals than we anticipated because it was abundance of food. 
And yet I've seen so much grace and just praise and provision of God. God provided. And, and he cares. So which of you, he says, by worrying. Maybe there's other areas of your life that you're going to give witness this morning of God's amazing grace and his provision of what it looks like to seek first the kingdom and then how God adds all these things. What does that look like? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? How much is a cubit? How many? Three what? Okay. Yep, TJ's lifting up his hand. A cubit is from the tip of your middle finger to your elbow. They say the average cubit's about 18 inches. So, <laughs> which of us can kind of mentally stretch ourselves out? If I could do that, I would be seven foot four. I'd be probably the right weight for that. It's just that I'm a little short. <laughs> So I'm just one cubit short. <laughs> and since I can't really change that by worrying about it, I'm just going to leave that one alone. <laughs> Trust the Lord in some other ways. Okay, so why do we worry about things? We can't change <laughs> our height by 18 inches by, by stressing out on that or by one cubit. God said this. He said, so why do you worry about anything? Why do you worry about clothing? Look at the lilies other than just my wife. <laughs> I'd look at the flowers. How they grow, they don't toil or spin. And I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory wasn't arrayed like one. Look at the flowers. They, they're just, they don't toil. And yet God said he closes the grass, which is today. And tomorrow it, it, it's gone. It gets thrown in the oven. Will he not much more clothe you? God knows what we have need of. Therefore, do not worry. What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? For these things, the Gentile, your heavenly Father knows that you have need of, of all of these things. Then this is the verse. Let's read this all together. But seek. Okay, all together. Let's start again. But seek first of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Seek first the kingdom. And his righteousness, all these things will be added. Now, that's, that's beautiful. That's truth. You know, when I think of, of um, some of the funerals and the reflection of life and the uncertainty and the know that we have an appointment and what is God doing with Griner? What's he wanting for us? Yesterday, as we, we said, uh, kind of in a... A delayed way, but in a very special way, he said goodbye to Grandpa. And um, we'll still carry him in our hearts, but he, we, we had a service here for Monroe, Monroe Miller, um, Barb and, and uh, Martha's father. And there was many relatives and things, but it was a special time of reflection. I, I loved the, after the service, they kind of in a, just a, in a special way that was a kind of a picture of just a blessing, but it was a, a releasing of balloons out by the cemetery and recognizing that Grandpa's in a good place. But uh, it was just a, a beautiful time of worship. But you know, we, we talked a little bit about this Hebrews 12, what it's like to have this cloud of witnesses around us. And the Passion Translation, I, I like that when we sang about letting go of whatever is not of life, letting our burdens down. And, and the Passion Translation says that the King James uses the term, um, this whole thing of, um, of not becoming tangled. Let's lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles or ensnares us. The Passion says... So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us. See, friends, I think that keeps us from sometimes seeking the kingdom first because we're burdened about some things that we're still carrying or, or that we shouldn't be carrying. And God has already made a provision for that. And so then verse 2 says, 
looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher. So as we reflect this morning, whether it's on Father's Day, whether it's on God's amazing provision, this is a time of worship together and recognizing the goodness of our Father. So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily could fall into. Then it goes on into the lower part of that chapter. It says, because we have a new covenant, we've come to Jesus who established a new covenant with his blood sprinkled upon the mercy seat, blood that continues to speak from heaven. I appreciated the communion. I think Chris and Juanita prepared it. And I, I love to receive communion. It declares this truth in the heavens because the blood that was sprinkled on the mercy seat in heaven, that's the, the, the blood of Jesus that continues to speak. You know what it speaks? If you think of what the blood of Jesus speaks, it speaks wholeness, completeness, forgiveness. Remember when when Cain killed Abel way back in Genesis, God the Father spoke and he said to uh, Cain, he says, where's Abel your brother? And he says, well, I'm not my brother's keeper. And God said, no, but his blood is speaking from the ground. What was it speaking? It was crying out for justice. Justice. And the scripture reflects on that. In Hebrews, it says his, his blood was crying for justice. You know what Jesus' blood speaks? Oh, it speaks forgiveness. You're clean. It speaks righteousness. We're cloaked. It speaks provision. It speaks this thing of seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness. Then these things will be added. It speaks about the things that are added to us. All these things shall be added unto you. That's what the blood keeps speaking. The blood of Jesus is, is forgiveness. So, since we're receiving an unshakable kingdom, it says we ought to be thankful and offer God the purest worship that delights his heart as we lay down our lives in absolute surrender, filled with awe. So now that's what we're doing this morning. We're going to just simply worship the Lord. And I'd like to hear your testimony. So we're going to invite you to come and just share. What's God doing in your heart? What is the other things? As you sought the kingdom of God, as you seek first his kingdom, what are these things that are added? You know, he says, um, make room in your heart to love every believer. Show hospitality to strangers, for there may be angels from God showing up as guests. I had to think about it. I know many of you took in guests <clears throat> over this weekend. We had people um, visiting with We had, of course, Dan staying at our place and it was a blessing to, to just have Dan Mulder here. And um, I know that uh, many of you had others. But when we seek first his kingdom, how many of you thought maybe you had some angels in your, in your home and, and uh, you were just sharing hospitality? I know many of you shared hospitality out here. Um, that that uh, I, I don't even know who this gentleman is. But somehow, I, I met a lot of people. I can't put a face to this guy, but I want you to, to listen um, to his uh, message because it's to the church. Okay. First saved voice message. Hi, Robert. My name is Jason Bell, but I'm calling from Mansfield, Ohio. My wife and I met you Saturday at the Dan Moeller event, and I just, I had to tell you, that was one of the healthiest and most loving events uh, we've ever attended, and um, we've attended uh, just hundreds of worship services and conferences in many different states, and that might have been the the healthiest, most loving, most bondage-free event we've ever attended. And everyone at your church was, was super kind, and uh, it was just, I just had to call you, it was such a phenomenal event. And everyone in your church was just full of love and freedom, and it was just an excellent, excellent day. I'm glad we drove three and a half hours because uh, we left 
five something in the morning and drove three and a half hours. So it was it was more than worth it. And just wanted to to let you know that um, it, it wasn't just Dan, and, and we love Dan. He was awesome, but but you all are obviously in in involved in living what Dan preaches. So God bless you, Robert. And um, uh, my number for whatever reason. I'm just really proud of you guys. I, I honestly don't remember who he is, but he reflected a number of the people so full of love and living so free. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's who God created us to be. And you are. You know, you might have been tired. And you say, boy, I don't know if you see me. <laughs> no, that's, that's the spirit of God upon this place and upon you. And that was just one testimony. And he worded, I have texts I could read you. There were just things that God has done that was amazing through you. You know, that was just the weekend event. We had a, a funeral here from a community, um, a, a family. Well, it was Bill Nieder. And um, there was just a, a smaller group of people. But, you know, they were amazed at the love of this body. They didn't really have a church. Maybe 12, 14 years ago, they came here. Maybe a total of four or five times. But it's the only church they would have identified with. They didn't have any other church. And so when he passed away unexpectedly by his woodpile, they said, you mean you'd do a funeral for us? And you did. And they were so grateful, the food and, and the things that, that happened. I just want to thank you for that. And I was blessed by the funeral yesterday. And, and then there was a really large one when, when our friend, our brother Richard, passed away. And I know there were many hands that um, helped with that. I think they served over 500 people that day. Um, Arlene says yes, over 500. But I just know that takes all of you. <laughs> many hands. It's a lot of work. But there's something so beautiful in that. And so I just want to thank you for... I, I'm grateful to be proud, uh, part of this. And I'm proud of you guys as a family. I, I mean that in a healthy way. But um, seeking first the kingdom. And then these things were added. So what's your testimony? What things, what things were added? Um, what things do you think of in this last week or two? And so I'm just going to invite you to come. The worship team can come back out and we can just praise the Lord more. But um, maybe you would have a, a testimony what does it mean to live the kingdom? What did it mean for you? What's something that happened that you knew was a witness? This guy from Ohio, I, I was blessed when he called. I, I never did talk to him in person. I sent him a text and asked him, can I share his message with the church family? Because I appreciate it. And he, he gave me permission, so I didn't share that out of, uh, without his permission. But um, he said, of course. And then he sent me another text thanking you all again. And um, just blessing this family. And so I, I just wanted to share that. Okay, friends, what, what do you see in God do? What's he speaking to you about? Um, just come on up. And, and it don't hurt if you're lying, you know, sitting on the bench waiting. That way you don't have to, everybody...